how to handle accusation. And I'm in the book of 1 John. I'm going to read 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. 1 John 3, verse 20, from the Passion Translation, and it reads, Whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience, and he knows everything there is to know about us. Amen. That's 1 John 3 verse 20 from the Passion Translation. The New King James Version says it like this. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. We're talking tonight about how to handle accusation. I read this verse in 1 John 3 verse 20. And it truly blessed me. You know, people of God, many times the enemy uses your own conscience to accuse and condemn you. You made a mistake or you messed up. And even though you've asked the Lord for forgiveness, there's a nagging guilt that keeps tracking with you. Your conscience, your heart won't let you move on. And one of the main purposes of condemnation is to directly affect your confidence in your identity in God. When you feel condemned, you don't feel confident in who you are in God at that time because you're more focused on what you did, the mess up and the condemnation that the enemy is bringing. So one of the main purposes of condemnation is to affect your confidence in your identity with God, identity in God. I read a quote recently by a pastor Pastor Ariogon, and the quote said, when your conscience is accused, your heart begins to condemn you, preventing you from having confidence when you're in the presence of the Father. When your conscience is accused, your heart begins to condemn you, and this prevents you from having confidence when you're in the presence of the Father. And if you don't have confidence when you're in God's presence, people of God, then you won't approach him boldly with your requests. And you'll doubt whatever you think he might be saying to you because your confidence is shot because of the condemnation. But I love 1 John 3.20 because it encourages us that even when our hearts condemn us, God is still greater than our hearts. Glory to God. I want you to think about that for a moment, people of God. He is greater than your heart. He is greater than your conscience. He is greater than the part of you that keeps you in check morally. Your conscience is supposed to keep you in check morally. And God says, I'm even greater than that. He knows your intentions even though you made a mistake, even though you made a mess of things, he knows your intentions. People of God, there is a greater courtroom for the human heart. There is a greater courtroom for the conscience. Come on tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. I think about one of my favorite generals of the faith, Catherine Kuhlman. There are those of you who have heard about Catherine Kuhlman as one of the generals of the faith. She told a story once of how she wanted to help her mother with the laundry one day because her mom had been called away. To, her mom started doing the laundry and then she had been called away to visit with someone at the hospital and she wasn't going to get back home until late that night. But her mother warned her before she left. Her mother told her, do not touch the laundry. Leave it alone. Leave everything as it is. I'll be back. Catherine was about six or seven years old at the time and she just she wanted to help. She thought to herself, you know, my mom is not going to come home till late. I want to help. And she was used to seeing her mother boil the clothes. That's what they did in those days. She would boil the clothes. But she didn't realize that her mother only boiled the white clothes so that they could be nice and clean. She didn't realize that she was six years old or seven years old. So Catherine boiled everything in sight. <laughs> she boiled every piece of garment, everything in sight. Her mother's expensive coat, every piece of clothing, white and colored. Everything was ruined. She had the best of intentions, but she messed up really badly. And she continues the story and she says when her mother came home, she feared for her life because they were a poor family and her mom would not have the money to replace all of the clothes that she destroyed. 
And she said when her mom came home, she watched trembling as her mother looked at all their expensive clothes that had been completely damaged. All the things that they had gathered and, and, and saved over the years and whatever. She looked at them and everything was damaged. And Catherine was get, trembling at this point because she knew or she felt she knew punishment was coming. And after seeing all the damage that Catherine had done, her mother looked at her and said, you did a good job. You did a good job. And people of God, that story blessed me so much because her mother chose to focus on her intention rather than her action. Come on. And that is just like God. He focuses a lot of times on the intention. Sometimes the actions, we don't, we miss it. A lot of times we miss it. But God focuses sometimes on the intention. In Jude 24, from the Amplified Version, Jude 24, the Bible says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling or falling into sin and to present you unblemished, blameless and faultless in the presence of his glory with triumphant joy and unspeakable delight. Hear me tonight, people of God. He will present us unblemished. He will present us blameless. He will present us faultless. You and I know that we are far from unblemished. We are far from blameless. We are far from faultless. As a matter of fact, we're full of fault and we're full of blemish. Not one person under the sound of my voice is irreproachable tonight. Romans 3 verse 10 says there is none righteous. No, not one. Come on. But because God is greater than our hearts, glory to God, because he is more merciful than our own conscience, he shall present us blameless glory. Come on tonight, people of God. He presents us as if we never did anything wrong. Come on tonight. I think about the story of the woman at the well in John chapter four. You know the story of this woman that encountered Jesus at the well. She went to draw water from the well at the sixth hour, which was noon. And she went at the time when she perhaps would not have to see the other woman in the village. She was probably sleeping with some of their husbands and just wanted to avoid any crowds. Amen. Yet Jesus met her. She went at that time and Jesus met her there at that shame filled hour. She went out, you know, at that time, so nobody else was around. She was ashamed, embarrassed, and he met her at that very moment. She was the very reason he told his disciples that he had to go to Samaria. And by the time their conversation ended, by the time Jesus finished talking to the woman at the well, by the time their conversation ended, this shame-filled woman who was trying to avoid the crowd ran into the crowd, come on, and shouted, come see a man, come on. Talk about being presented as blameless. She ran into that crowd like she didn't remember half the stuff that she did because she didn't. She said, come see a man. She became an instant evangelist that day, people of God, come on. And tonight I just wanted to encourage somebody, even if it's only one person, I just wanted to encourage you that it does not matter how much your heart and conscience have condemned you. Your father is greater than your heart. He is greater than your conscience. Even as I was preparing tonight's word, the Holy Spirit revealed that there is a demonic spirit of accusation and blame that is operating in this season. Hear me by the spirit of the Lord. There is a demonic spirit of accusation and blame that is operating in this season. The devil is called the accuser of the brethren. That is what the Bible calls him in Revelation 12 verse 10. So whenever there is accusation in any form, he is involved behind the scenes. I don't care who it comes from. Whoever is making the accusation, the enemy is the one that is behind it because the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. And we see this spirit of accusation when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit said, you know, there's a spirit of accusation in operation. And I started to press into him about it. I started to observe it for myself. He said, when you, when we see 
the spirit of accusation. We know the enemy is at work and we see this spirit of accusation in the political arena. We see it. Politicians blaming each other for things. It manifests itself through cancel culture. Come on. Come on. This cancel culture of, oh, because somebody did something, we cancel them. That's a spirit of accusation. It's a spirit of condemnation. It is manifesting itself in the midst of this global pandemic. But aside from its external manifestation, people of God, it is oppressing some internally on the call tonight. The Holy Spirit revealed that. There's some of you that are being oppressed internally. By this spirit of accusation, it's an inner voice. Speak Holy Spirit. It's an inner voice that is accusing you and condemning you and criticizing you. And if that's you tonight, I want you to remember that God is greater than that inner voice. God is greater than the condemnation you feel in your heart. God is greater than the condemnation you feel in your mind. God is greater, the Bible says. He is greater than your heart. You know, we sing songs in church like our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. We don't even realize the depths of what we're singing. May you never forget tonight, people of God, that God is greater. And when you hear that, when you hear the phrase God is greater, when you sing songs about God being greater, let this word, let this word tonight come back to you that God is greater if my heart condemns me, God is greater than my heart because he knows all things. He knows the intention behind what I do. He knows the intention behind what I say. May you never forget, people of God, that God is greater. And may that truth that God is greater, may that truth help you to walk this Christian life, glory, in a manner that truly shows that God is greater. Glory to God. Now unto him, come on. Who is able to keep you from stumbling glory. I feel you Holy Spirit. And to present you faultless. Before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy. To God our Savior. Hallelujah. Who alone is wise. Be glory and majesty. Dominion and power. Both now and forever. The only wise God. The God who presents us faultless. We're going to press into that God tonight. Glory. God is greater. Let's go to God in prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we honor you tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight. We bless and exalt your matchless name. Glory. You are holy. Glory to God. You are righteous. You are the righteous one. Jehovah M. Kadesh, the God who sanctifies. Jehovah Sidkenu, God, our righteousness. We honor you tonight. We reverence your holy name, glory. We reverence your holy name. You are the one who presents us faultless and blameless. You are the one who presents us without reproach. Instead of accusing and condemning us, you present us as though we have never sinned. What kind of love is this, glory? What kind of love is this? You even said that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tonight, Father, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. We thank you for taking our place. Because of your sacrifice, we have been cleansed and we are able to be presented faultless. Blood was shed for our ability to be, 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 to be presented faultless. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blood was shed for our ability to be presented faultless before the throne. Not even our own hearts or our own conscience can accuse us or condemn us because you are greater than our hearts. You're so much greater than our conscience. I even remember this, this uh, quote that I read, people of God, even as I'm praying. And it says, whenever you are misunderstood, whenever you are misunderstood, stand under God's understanding of you. Come on tonight. Whenever people misunderstand you, people of God, stand under God's understanding of you because he knows so much more. Come on. He is your creator. He's so much greater than your conscience, so much greater than the things that people may say or the misunderstandings. Come on tonight. 
Holy Spirit, I just pray that you will stir up in us tonight a fresh and a new understanding of what it means when we say God is greater. Let this truth sink deep into our hearts, God. Let it convict us in our own Christian walk. Help us to truly live like God is indeed greater. I pray tonight, God, for those dealing with accusation in any form. We know that whatever the form, there's only one source of accusation. So tonight, God, we appropriate the power of the cross, glory, to cancel all judgments and every form of accusation that has been launched by hell. We break and we cancel every assignment of accusation tonight in the name of Jesus. We silence the mouth of the accuser, glory. We silence the mouth of the accuser and we say, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. We take authority tonight over the spirit of accusation, over the spirit of condemnation that has been unleashed in the lives of your people. Our lives represent the land that you gave us, God. And we exercise the authority that you have given us over our land tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bind and we silence every whispering spirit, glory, every tormenting spirit, every nagging spirit. And the Holy Ghost is even revealing that for some of you, you may, you may repent. And even though you repent, you still feel guilty and you keep on repenting for the same thing over and over again. It's a nagging guilt and nagging guilt is not of God. The Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 9 that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So nagging guilt is not of God. We bind every nagging spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. We bind every monitoring spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And we cancel the agenda of every secret counsel of the wicked we cancel the agenda tonight, God. Your word says no weapon formed against us would prosper. And tonight we condemn every tongue that has risen up against us in judgment. Yes, God. Yes, God. And we call forth divine recompense, Yahweh El Gimola, in every area. In every area where the spirit of accusation has tarnished our names, every area where the spirit of accusation has tarnished our reputations, we call forth divine recompense in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be divine amends made for every way that we have suffered hurt or loss in the name of Jesus. Glory. The Bible says the enemy accuses us before God day and night. But the Bible also says the accuser of the brethren has been cast down glory in the mighty name of Jesus. So Father, we walk in your freedom tonight, glory, from every yoke of bondage. We walk in your freedom tonight, glory to God, for whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Glory. I speak a mighty encouragement over your people tonight, God. I speak surrender to their hearts and their souls. Surrender for those who find it hard to forgive themselves. For those who come down hard on themselves. The Lord is even revealing there's some of you, you come down so hard on yourself. You find it so hard to forgive yourself. Glory. I just speak a surrender to your heart tonight in the name of Jesus. Surrender. Surrender in Jesus name. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you God. We bind that spirit of perfectionism in the name of Jesus. We bind that self-righteous spirit. Hear me tonight, people of God. It is self-righteousness to believe that God cannot forgive me for what I've done. It is self-righteousness to believe that what I've done is too great for God to forgive me. That is called self-righteousness. After you have confessed your sins and you try to beat yourself with stripes, because of what you did wrong. It is a spirit of self-righteousness and we bind it tonight in the name of Jesus. That spirit of perfectionism and that spirit of self-righteousness. We bind it tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory. Speak Holy Spirit. I even speak a relief and a release over every one of you who have enslaved yourselves in the prison of your minds, in the prison of your conscience, every person that cannot set themselves free because they've locked themselves in the prison of their conscience, in the prison of their minds. Be loosed tonight, glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. Be loosed tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Everybody, I want you to just take a deep breath right now. 
Inhale. If you're listening to me, inhale right now and exhale. I want you to just take a deep breath right now in the name of Jesus. Glory. We break every assignment tonight, God, of mental or emotional entrapment, mental or emotional imprisonment in the lives of your people tonight. We break that assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, people of God. Inhale again. Exhale. Come on. Inhale. Exhale. We break that spirit. We break that assignment. Glory in the name of Jesus. We command all spirits associated with accusation to leave our lives now in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory. Glory to God. And Father, we just thank you, glory, for your presentation. Even in this moment, you are presenting us glory to God. I'm seeing a picture, people of God, of a grand coronation a celebration glory where the Lord is presenting us. Each of us have a crown on our heads and the Lord is presenting us glory. We thank you for the presentation tonight, God. Where else could we ever be presented faultless or blameless glory in a world that is filled with criticism? We serve a God who looks at us and says, it is good glory, glory to God. Catherine's mother looked at her and said, you did a good job, even though she wrecked those clothes, even though it was going to cost her mother so much money to replace them. She looked at her effort. She looked at her intention and she said, you did a good job. God, we thank you that you look at our efforts, that you look at our intentions, that you look at our hearts and you look at your creation. We are the work of your hands. You look at us tonight, God, and you say it is good Glory to God. Glory to God. We serve a God who chooses to find no fault in us. Even when there are multiple reasons, multiple things that we have done that he could find fault in. We serve a God who is not nitpicking at our faults, people of God. Glory. He does not choose to find fault in us. Glory. He said, as far as the east is from the west, I've separated your sins. Glory. Glory. Let's just worship him in this moment, people of God. Come on, begin to worship him in this moment. He is such a faithful God. God, you are so faithful. You are such an amazing and an incredible God. Glory. We owe you our lives. We honor you tonight. We lift your name high. Glory. We say all hail King Jesus, all hail Emmanuel. Oh, we just love you tonight, God, glory. Don't you just love him, people of God? Don't you just love your faithful God? Let's begin to flood the broadcast with that confession tonight. For those of you on the free conference call line, just begin to say, I love you, Jesus. Just begin to flood the atmosphere with that confession. For those of you on Periscope, just begin to flood the broadcast with that confession. Begin to put that up on the screen screen. I love you, Jesus. Glory. I love you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, God. I love you tonight, God. I love you tonight. And even as you put that up on the screen, I want you to add a heart or a kiss or some flowers, emoji, something, people of God. We are casting our crowns at his feet tonight. We are flowering him and, and just showering him with kisses and roses and flowers in this season, in this moment. Thank you, God. We love you tonight, Jesus. Only you could present us faultless. Only you are above the condemnation that we feel in our hearts. We love you tonight, God. Glory. Glory. Let's just love on our heavenly father tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We adore you, God. <laughs> we adore you, God. We cherish you tonight. Thank you, God. Glory to your matchless name. Hallelujah. God is greater. Glory. God is greater. Hallelujah. God is greater. People of God, begin to decree that over your own hearts, over your own conscience, over your own mind, over your own life. Begin to decree that God is greater. 
God is greater. First John 3 verse 20 says, whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience. And he knows everything there is to know about us. God is greater. Glory to God. God is greater than any accusation the enemy may try to bring against you. God is greater than any criticism the enemy may try to bring against you. God is greater than the condemnation in this season. God is greater. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you tonight. Glory. And I just release that over your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I release that declaration that God is greater. That they will walk in the freeness and the fullness and the forgiveness that you died for them to have. Forgiveness is a part of your birthright, people of God. Blood was shed for your forgiveness. Blood was shed for your cleansing glory. Father, we thank you tonight. Help us not to entangle ourselves again in the yoke of bondage. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And I even lose that freedom over this call tonight. Freedom from every accusation. Freedom from every condemnation. Freedom from every guilt and shame. Freedom from every criticism tonight. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Help us to walk worthy of that confession that God is greater. Father, I just cover your people under the blood tonight. From the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight that this word is rooted in their hearts. Glory to God. I thank you that this word is rooted in their hearts. I bless you tonight, people of God. I speak a benediction over you. A blessing that cancels every curse. Glory. May the blessing of the Lord. Glory. May the blessing of the Lord sit upon your heads, sit over your heads in this season. May the blessings of the Lord sit upon your family, upon your bloodline, upon your generational, your descendants. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Upon your descendants, may the blessings of the Lord rest upon your finances. Let May the blessings of the Lord rest upon your health. May the blessings of the Lord rest upon your relationships. May the blessings of the Lord rest upon your business. May the blessings of the Lord rest upon your ministry assignments. I command a blessing. The Lord, and as a matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't have to command the blessing because the Bible says where there is unity. Come on. God commands a blessing, glory. So even as we are on one accord tonight, pressing into God, he has already commanded a blessing, people of God, over every single one of us. Just receive, receive that blessing tonight, glory to God. Receive that blessing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, glory, glory to God. Father, I just seal this prayer, I seal this work tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory. People of God, I pray that your hearts were encouraged and stirred tonight. God is greater than your heart. God is greater than your conscience. Receive that. Sometimes we don't know how to fight against the enemy because we don't know the word. But that is something to put in your toolkit. That's a scripture to put in your toolkit tonight, people of God. That when the enemy tries to come with accusation... Speak that first John three verse 20 says, God is greater. Come on. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I condemn every tongue that rises up against me in judgment. Get some scriptures to put in your toolkit. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Come on tonight. Glory. I love you guys so much. I am praying for you. I pray that this word encouraged your heart and stirred your faith. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Have a safe weekend, people of God. Remember, we will not be meeting next week for Midnight Cry. We will resume on Tuesday, July 14th. Tuesday, July 14th. But the calls are on, on the YouTube. Thank you, God. The calls are on YouTube. If you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, it's MNC Prayer Call. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can listen to all the, the past calls. We go as far back as 2015. Come on tonight. They're on the free conference call line recording and they're on YouTube. You can listen to the prayer call while we're on break. Amen.
I love you guys so much. I am praying for you. Continue to keep the Midnight Cry Prayer Call lifted in prayer. And by the grace of God, I'll see you again, not next week, but the week after on Tuesday, the 14th of July. God bless you guys.